You're cool. You're not mainstream. All right, we're going to check out our latest round of underground metal recommendations, and we're going to start with Skinwalker with Man Walks Backwards Into the Ocean. Great title. Bands out of Alaska. That's loud. <laughs> all right <laughs> that sounds pretty rad like i feel like sometimes it's hard to get sort of the summary of what the band's going to sound like in just a couple of seconds but i have a feeling that was pretty good <laughs> so they describe themselves as uh hardcore and uh dread forever <laughs> uh i'm hearing kind of more power violence vibes and man that is some gnarly production sound <laughs> just very distorted loud kind of like maxed out which sometimes bothers me when it almost sounds like you're like peaking the audio but i think for this style it works and uh i really like the whole packaging here the cover art the again the album title sounds great <laughs> sounds right up my alley and uh coming out just uh, a month and a half or so before the new Nails record, but I feel like those would go side by side pretty well. So yeah, check these guys out. Moving on, we have a Swamp Worm with, oh, Arca, Arcatuthis, something along those lines, and they are out of Munich, Germany. Let's check them out. All right, that sounds pretty interesting. A nice kind of segue off the last one because I'm still hearing some kind of grindcore sounding elements in there, but also death metal. And then towards the end, like getting super atmospheric and maybe even a little bit kind of doomy. So this is one where I feel like I would have to listen to more to kind of get uh, more of the full scope of their sound. But the production's great. I love bands that kind of like mix a lot of different styles, especially ones that maybe don't seem like they generally go together because that just makes it sound a little bit more original in a time where everything sounds so similar <laughs> in a lot of cases. So I'm definitely intrigued to hear more again. Great production, liking what I'm hearing overall. N no real feedback at this time. I'm just curious to uh, potentially hear more and you should too. That's what this segment's all about. Just giving you a little taste so that you want to go out and Check it out for yourself and support these bands. Moving along, we have the return of Anna Pest with You and Me at the End of the Fucking World. I have covered this project before. Love their union of kind of like deathcore, tech death, mathcore, and all sorts of other stuff. And this would have made my best of August list. Uh, but it came out right at the end of the month, and I usually need to make that video at least a week in advance just because I, b believe it or not, I have a life. Like, I have other things I need to do. I have a full-time job, <laughs> got a family, and uh, the house is falling apart, so I've been having to take care of a lot of that stuff, too. But I wanted to at least feature it somewhere, and so let me give you a little taste of this. I found
Yeah, I've already listened to the whole album in this case, so just let me tell you, if you like this style of music, you're going to love this album. It is so good. Highly recommended, especially to fans of uh, the Callous Dow Boys, Pupil Slicer, uh, See You Space Cowboy in particular. Those are like the three that come to mind. But as you can hear in the guitar work, there's also plenty of like periphery, maybe a little sixth in there. I think this is the most like expanded their sound has been overall because they're, they're throwing in a little bit. So some people might not like it, but they threw in some kind of more like emo elements, kind of like, again, what like CU Space Cowboy has been doing. And I love it because I love all those styles of music. I mean, I went to high school in the 2000s, so I was listening to a lot of this kind of, you know, scene music around that time and also going into college. So highly, highly recommend this. But if you don't really like any of the genres or bands I mentioned, you're probably not going to like it. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, moving right along. Footloose and Fancy Free. We have Sunseeker with Crystal Gold and uh, Crystal and Gold, sorry. And th they are out of Connecticut. Just a little two songer here, one of them being a cover, but let's check out the main single here. <laughs> Uh, I was actually getting a lot. I wonder what they have in the genre tag. So there, I'm hearing the melodic death metal elements. And so that's definitely valid. But, uh, and this is a compliment for me. Some, from some people be an insult. But I'm also hearing a lot of like early 2000s metalcore in those riffs from Avenged Sevenfold. But with, with better vocals. <laughs> I also have to make that little dig there. Sorry, just not a huge fan of M. Shadow's vocals. But even though he's got a great range. But uh, anyways, yeah, also, like, I don't know, early kill switch engage and um, yeah, just a, a lot of stuff from that era that I absolutely loved. Uh, maybe a little bleeding through in there, too. The vocals are definitely much more sort of at the gatesy kind of style, though. So a little, a little bit more extreme there, but the riffs a lot, um, which makes sense because those early melodic metalcore bands formed out of listening to stuff like at the gates. So cool stuff i think the production could be tightened up a little bit more you don't want it too glossy like a little edge of rawness there but i was just noticing places where the guitar sounded a little bit off in the mix to me just a little bit more kind of like amateurish which you know it, it's not bad by any means i'm liking what i'm hearing from the performances and i think there's a lot to build on here but that's probably the main feedback feed feedback <laughs> that uh, i took away from just again this little snippet so Cool stuff there. Good batch today. We're going to go on to Alkonost. Yeah, Alkonost with, oh God, another one of these <laughs> things that I, I won't be able to pronounce. They are out of Russia. But yeah, let's let's give this a little spinny spin. They're getting a lot of Nightwish vibes from this one and um, looking forward to finally doing a Nightwish tier list because that new album's coming out real soon. And at this time of the recording, I've already gone back and listened to all their old albums for the first time. And uh, it was a, it was a mostly positive experience. So uh, digging digging this overall, really strong vocals, really liking her voice. I wonder what we got from the band photo here. Yeah, doing doing a great job there. I like the semi folky kind of riffs going on there and um yeah just kind of full package production this one on the other hand feels a little overproduced but a lot of these bands going for these big epic sounds that i hear in this segment 
kind of miss that mark. So I'd almost, in this case for this style, prefer a little overproduced to underproduced. Because I hate when it's like big epic performances, but then it sounds like it was recorded in a garage. That just does not particularly work for me. So that's not the case here. But I think you could probably tweak that a little bit so it doesn't sound quite so kind of cellophane glossy. But overall, I'm liking, liking what I'm hearing and um, would be interested to check out more, even though this is not generally my favorite style, but I'm, I'm kind of getting more into it. So check them out. We're going to go to Niftar with uh, La Lacus Asfar, so something like that. <laughs> These guys are out of Mexico, which we don't often get, so I'm always uh, excited to get some of that. So let's give them a spin. All right, so already in that first 30 or so seconds, there, there was a lot I enjoyed there. I love that little bass intro. The sound of the drums is gnarly. Like, I, I'm, a, I'm kind of a sucker for that dodgeball snare tone, if done right. Like, St. Anger does it way too loud, and it, it's become a meme, obviously, but here it's kind of like a little lower in the mix and just makes it sound a little bit punchier and gross. Uh, digging that. The very kind of blackened death metal kind of sound to the guitars, I would say, and then just really strong... Death Growl, I think this is also a good case of the production being a little bit more raw, but matched almost perfectly to the music, because it, it very much feels like they're kind of going for a lot of those 90s death metal influences, maybe hearing even a little bit of, like, necrophobic in there, but also, like, leaning more so towards, I don't know, like, uh, Morbid Angel, Deicide, that kind of stuff. But again, another one seems full package. Uh, I've seen some longer songs here, which makes me a little nervous because, again, some of these bands aren't very good at, like, sustaining that runtime and justifying that runtime, but sometimes they're really good at it. So I'll be curious if they particularly are able to do that. But, yeah, nice old school sound of that one. We have ESP Mayhem with Cyberbully out of Melbourne, Australia. And my dog is sneaking in here. But let's check them out. <laughs> All right, more kind of like power violence vibes in this one, too. And similar production to, to that first album where it's like really blown out. The difference here is they describe themselves as three synth, no guitar, future shock grind. <laughs> and so that's pretty wild. There, there is no apparently no guitar here. I don't know if there's a bass. Kind of sounds like maybe. No, no, no bass either. We got three. Yeah, it's three people doing synth. Wow, that's interesting. Um, I, I'm always intrigued by kind of like, you could call it a gimmick, but I think they're like really spinning it into a sound. I like the more kind of electronic angle, but it's like no less heavy. Uh, I, I love bands like that too, that prove that you can be just absolutely disgustingly heavy, even without some of the more traditional instruments. Or I'm also thinking of, um, shoot, I'm blanking on uh the name of hazard uh le, le, uh, le chance du ha le chance du hazard um they do or he does like black metal with just orchestral elements there is no like electric guitar or anything in there for the most part anyways um and so yeah this is like a, a different version of that and it, it sounds rad sounds gnarly um i'm i'm all about kind of uh 
propping up these more sort of unique sounds. So definitely catching my eye and ears with that one. Moving on, we have Francisco Meza with Textures out of Toronto, Ontario. And this is an instrumental project that I did sample a little bit. So yeah, from what I sampled of this, and I, I didn't give it like a full run through, but I kind of checked out a few tracks. Lots of good dynamics here. There's some very chill, kind of quiet, just uh, relaxed kind of stuff going on. And then there's uh, some some super heavier stuff. I really like those like epic harmonized guitars and all the soloing too. I picked this track in particular because I feel like it showcased a lot of those elements all in one place. Instrumental is, is always tricky for me. Like the guitar's got to do a lot of carrying in terms of not having the vocals and like kind of becoming the vocals in a way. And so again, this would be one where I'm kind of curious how well it does that as like a full front to back listen. But sometimes it's nice to just throw on something that is more of a soundtrack, I guess, as opposed to uh, stuff that's more vocally driven. So solid production, solid performances rat uh, and then we're going to close out with igor lapo with reasonable nonsense which covered these this guy another solo project if i recall yeah he he, he does it all um and yeah out of st petersburg russia the covered a bunch of these releases in the past they've all been pretty good but let me jump right into that <laughs> So I've compared this project to Dream Theater, very progressive metal kind of in that style, I think particular from, again, what I sort of sampled out of this album. That was my main takeaway. But honestly, I, I kind of, <laughs> this is a super hot take, but I feel like I've enjoyed a lot of what I've heard from Igor Lapo more than a lot of Dream Theater. Like, don't get me wrong, there's, there's some really great Dream Theater, a few albums I really enjoy. But for the most part, like, it's kind of song for song. I, I feel like their albums are kind of inconsistent and the Igor Lapo albums I've listened to have like a really nice flow to them and uh, just a lot of power. I like the vocals better too. Like the dream theater vocals kind of annoy me sometimes, but uh, also just again, impressive that this is all from one guy from all the instruments to the vocals, to the lyrics, mixing, mastering all of it. And that's, that's always impressive to me. This is like a, I, I could totally see this coming out from a, a major label because they've, They've just got that power to it and just, again, kind of the full package. So thought it would be a good one to end on. But thank you, as always, for watching this segment. Check out this playlist for a lot more of this stuff. Also consider joining the Patreon for some additional support. Or you can become a channel member. You get some little extra emojis and things like that. And um, you can also buy merch. Or you can just continue watching. Like That's one of the best ways to support. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.